bills went out, we would just have to wait until next week. meeting was called together the special meeting of uh, Monday the 25th of November uh, the hour of five o'clock has come and gone in fact it's like 507 ish it looks like 509, 509. just the glare on the clock back there anyway let's start out with our pledge uh, led by our clerk I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United, United States of America, of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands one nation indivisible Invisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Supervisor. I'm going to read this into the record. I'll also leave you a copy. Um, $95,000 in compensation would lead most people to believe the type of compensation would come with a sense of knowledge of how to do the job within the confines of the law. Your salaries and benefits linked information for the 09 through 2013 and 2013 through 2017 does not match the compensation resolution. Your current disclosure of compensation shows receipt of life insurance and accidental death. We covered that before. You confirm that that is now going to be paid by the officials directly. An elected official cannot arbitrarily purchase other benefits to themselves. Your compensation is set and does not include the ability to access other benefits, even if you pay for them. Are those who receive the illegal benefits since May of 17 going to pay the taxpayers back for the illegal benefit? No comment? One moment, Mr. Allen. I just want to make sure. Jim, do we address this? Because this is the second time the gentleman has brought it up. It's public comment. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Sir. Okay. Um, in regards to the cemetery, the minutes claim you did not split the projects at the cemetery, yet the proposal you received were dated the same date. Minutes claim you said the quote was for $9,800, but what was that was not true according to the quote you provided under FOIA. The actual quote was almost double that, $18,750. You also told the, board, told the board you would get a second quote, but all indications that never happened. More importantly, how can you tell the board on September 12th that you have a quote for the project when the actual quote is dated three days later? Prevailing wage documents for that same project show the vendor that gave the proposal as a subcontractor, not the contractor. You would think a $95,000 compensation would ensure such a mistake is corrected. You just awarded health insurance, yet you have not bid it out in five years. Did you receive legal advice that it was not required to bid out? According to the AG, the Attorney General, health insurance is not a professional service that would qualify for not bidding. You disclosed in one of your statement of economic interest that you were paid by another unit of government for consulting. When asked what unit of government, you amended your SEI, and now it reflects no such payments. So which is it? You were paid for consulting or were not? You can't have it both ways. If not, as you now claim, that makes your first SEI false. Honesty appears to be a real issue. I asked for specific wage and expense information related to the road district personnel who did work on your property. Before the final response came, you contacted the past highway commissioner and wanted him to sign an affidavit saying road district personnel never worked on your property. He would not sign that affidavit, would he? Why not? Because he knows such an affidavit would not be true. Is it customary for you to ask people to sign affidavits that you know are not true? I know he would not sign it because he knows it was not true, and I know this because I spoke to him. Why would my FOIA request trigger such an action on your part? The fact is, and you know it, they worked on your property on more than one occasion, and the fact you're trying to reach certain employees by name to, give them to, to get to them to say things that is a very strong indicator, you're trying to cover those actions up. We all know you cannot direct road district employees or fire them as you mentioned at your last meeting 
We also know affidavits and information obtained to date shows work was done on your property with road district personnel and equipment. While you may not have directed the actual employees, at a minimum, you asked someone in order for it to happen. Who did you ask for the help? Did the past highway commissioner do as you asked? Your retainer agreement for the past board member to be the attorney for the road district is neither proper or legal as he has not performed any service, yet you're paying him without a single invoice presented. I suggest you take immediate steps to recover those funds. As the way it stands, it appears to be nothing more than a ghost payroll. Can you explain what the township health insurance expense has to do with the private attorney's representation? That's referenced in the agreement you have with him. Why would you include that figure for his compensation? Was he maintained on the township health insurance even though he was no longer a trustee? Or was this just a perk to convince him to not run again, run again as a, for that office? The same appears for the senior liaison, who was also a past board member. Amazingly, he gets the same $12,000 as being a board member and $330 a month that just happens to be the health insurance figure for the township that's outlined in the attorney's agreement. Was this the same perk to convince him to not run against, or not run again, as we have been told? These are all questions I have. I don't expect you to answer them here. I don't know if you ever will answer them, but I wanted them read into the record because I believe they need. We need to get to the bottom of all of these issues. That's all I have. Thank you. year of 2019 to 2020, uh, be it ordained by the Board of Trustees, the Joliet Township as follows, section one with the sum of $1,781,240 is hereby levied upon all properties subject to taxation within the road district as that the property is assessed and equalized in order to meet and defray all the necessary expenses and liabilities of the road district as required by statute or vote by the people in the ordinance with the law for such purposes as general road fund for 2019 going into 2020. <clears throat> Excuse me. That amount levied for each object and purpose shall be as follows. And that that would be for all the highway main, road maintenance and stuff that we perform next year. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. Then, Mike, I was asking. I'm sorry. Yeah. Kelly, you want to add anything? Um, just in coming up with the numbers for the levy, everything was taken into consideration that needed to be taken into consideration, but such as truth and taxation, MST funding. Um, so the original levy, which was a half year last year's levy, is then changed to reflect here. That is correct. Right. Okay. Upon the direction of yeah. the highway commissioner. I know you had a different proposal uh, a week ago or whatever that was, I understand. Well, after meeting with right. Colleen, then she advised me that we should do the same as been done in the past. Right. I, I just want to make sure there was a change. Right. And that, that was it, the change that I was just basically just repeating last year's right but this year's with the, with that extra increase that we hope we get okay. which we don't, we don't know at this time yet just for correction i did not advise to do what we have done in the past i advised um how all the different figures how we come about them right and then asked you what you thought 
your numbers were going to look like for a budget that was out that you were going to spend, <coughs> and then you came up with these numbers. Is that right? Yes, statement? right. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, then obviously um, asking you then by consent road, Mr. Commissioner, you're in agreement with what's being proposed tonight. I am. After your review and your concurrence with what we're going to do. Correct. Okay. I just want to make sure. Um, anything else we need to add formally? Uh, I don't think so. Anything further we have to add for clarification from the Road District Commissioner for tonight? Nothing? To my knowledge, she's okay. in agreement and stated that. that yep. I That's what I asked. Comments. We just want to make sure it's very good. Okay. Uh, well, thanks, Mike, for working on it with uh, Colleen. Um, then, obviously, uh, approval of ordinance number 2019-05RD, the 2019 tentative Road District Levy. Uh, for passage will be available for the public to review over the next 20 days prior to passage uh, in December. I'd like to make a motion to approve the road district levy ordinance number 2019-05 RD for the It would be referred to as the tentative. Right. Uh, motion by Trustee Griffin, second by Trustee Purdy <coughs> for the approval ordinance number 2019-05 RD, the 2019 tentative right. road district levy. Okay, can the dollar amount be requested, Brian? Yes. Yes, ma'am. One million seven hundred and eighty-one thousand two hundred and forty dollars. We have a motion and second with the notation of the total dollars. Uh, any further clarification needed? Yes, I just want to say that the road district will not receive this exact figure. But it's a figure that they do receive. Keep in mind, they only keep approximately, last year I think they kept 57% of it because the rest will go to um, municipalities. Okay. Anybody else with a question? Council, anything to add? Nothing. Our clerk? <coughs> no? no? Okay, then. Uh, we have a motion and a second. We're all ready to go. Roll call, please. Trustee Gavin? Aye. Trustee Burton? Aye. Trustee Hurston? Aye. Supervisor Vera? Aye. Motion carried. Okay, Mike. Okay. So thanks, Mike, for putting the extra days in there today. I know you're ahead of time. And thank you, Colleen, for the couple of times you also met with me. And I know the clerk did as well, so we get the dates set up correctly. So we meet the calendar requirement, and we'll hit the target by moving back the other meeting to the 17th, 17th to accommodate the passage with the other items. Uh, no further business uh, required. Uh, no request for closed session. Uh, we're ready to go on. And I'll just go to adjournment. Trustee Hurston. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Next meeting is going to be Tuesday, December 17, 2019, at 5 p.m. Second. Motion by Trustee Hurston, second by Trustee Burton to adjourn this meeting until we meet again on Tuesday, December 17, 2019, uh, at 5 p.m. as well. All those in favor of said motion say aye. Aye. Our journey.